Welcome, foolish mortals, to the haunted mansion. On this week's episode, we have theme park news galore as well as a ton of Halloween Horror Nights news. You're listening to episode 135 of the Theme Park Duel Podcast. Prepare yourselves for an unforgettable encounter. Hi, and welcome to the Theme Park Duo Podcast. Grab your park map, Chiro, and hop in line with us as we take you on a coast-to-coast adventure through the world of theme parks, haunts, conventions, and more. Now, here's your hosts, Nikki and Gabriel. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Theme Park Duo Podcast. I'm Nikki. And I'm Gabe. And we are the, the Theme, Theme Park, Park Duo. Duo. Tons of exciting news to talk about in this week's show. Enough to dedicate a whole episode to just the news. What? There's, it just feels like the Theme Park world right now is just kind of going bonkers. Tons of stuff going on at multiple parks. Halloween, non-Halloween, all this fun stuff. So we wanted to make sure that we were covering a good amount of it for you guys so you could hear our opinions, our thoughts, our, and w- how we feel about the theme park world, as it were, right now. And we do have some very exciting stuff coming up. Right, Nikki? We have, we have tons of exciting news coming up. So much. So one of them we can't really talk about quite yet just because it hasn't been announced. But... Uh, if you've if you've been listening to the show for a while, you probably know, especially with the time of year that it is right now and where we're going in terms of seasons and what I'm involved in. But I can't officially say yet until it's been announced, but there is something very exciting on the horizon for me in particular. So Nikki, Nikki has been aware of this for a very long time, has been over my shoulder about this thing, and uh, you've been very excited about it. I'm, I'm you're in also the dark. Lost. You're I am lost. so, in the, I you're have also no idea what lost. you're referring okay, to. I'm good. <laughs> Nikki's totally lost because I'm actually being very vague. And that's so how, vague. But that's, but that's a good thing. I'm being so vague that you don't even know. That's true. Which is good. So I'm going to bleep out exactly what we're talking about right now so I can tell you what it is. It's. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, so there's that. That hasn't been announced yet, so I have to wait till that is announced in order to say anything in particular. But I can be vague about it all I want. True. So if you're wondering what that noise was, it was Bowser um, finding his resting spot at the edge of the couch. So if you heard a little ding a ling lings And by Bowser, we are referring to the villain from Mario. He lives he, with us. Yeah, he just, um, he's like our, our, our living roommate. Uh, he lives in the extra room that we have. He doesn't really pay rent because he threatens to hurt us with yeah. fireballs. Uh-huh. So he's it's just waiting, quite awkward. He's just waiting for his castle to be finished. Oh, wait, no, it's Peach's castle, isn't it? No, he has his own castle. Uh, yeah, he's just waiting for his castle to be yeah, finished in Yeah, because Peach Hollywood. has a castle that has him all over it. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that was confusing me. Um, yeah, no, our dog is also named Bowser, but that's just a coincidence. Yes, just a mere coincidence. Uh-huh. But don't don't ask us any trivia questions about Super Mario Brothers, because we may not be that knowledgeable in it, even though we've grown up with it. Not be that knowledgeable in it. And speaking... I feel like that was a direct attack at me. I'm not that knowledgeable about it. Maybe. Anyway... It was a drag attack at me. <laughs> Speaking of trivia, we actually were on a theme park trivia show called the Theme Park Trivia Show. It was a lot of fun. It was a ton of fun. Yeah. We embarrassed ourselves thoroughly. A little bit. You thoroughly. more than me. People expect me not to know a lot, but you didn't know a lot. I did really well in one round in particular. You did very I well. Did. You did very, very well. So so we not we're not sure when this will drop on their website, but Stay tuned to ThemeParkTriviaShow.com. Our episode will drop at some point, and we will blast it out on social media. So kudos to the team, and thank you for having us out on that show. It was a blast, so we'll make sure you guys know when um, when that episode does go live so you can watch us make fools out of ourselves. <laughs> it, was a, it was a ton of fun. It was a, an absolute ton of fun. But, Nikki, we have something else awesome to share as well. What? What's the next thing up? What? Oh, the next Goodness thing gracious, up. Nikki. Goodness <laughs> gracious, Goodness gracious. You, you Goodness totally gracious. caught me off guard. <laughs> we had a game plan, Nikki. We had a game plan. Yeah, the game plan was that you would... 
point to me the next time I was the one to talk, not just the throw it to me. <laughs> I didn't really throw it. I'm more like chucked it at you. <laughs> yeah, like fast curveball. <laughs> well, you got it. So good luck. Oh, good I job, don't good think I did. Okay, you like, you anyway. did like a like a, a bobble catch. You're good. I did. You're okay. Good. Well, anyway. Anyway, the next piece of news is actually an event that's coming up this weekend. Oh, goodness gracious, Nikki. Again. It's not? No, it's not. That's not the next thing on the list. Look right above that, Nikki. Read podcast review. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our show notes, and I put it in bold so Nikki really knows what's going on. But clearly the bold and the underlined and the italics don't make a difference. <laughs> Everything is bold under like That's not italics. true. It's not true yes, at all. It is. No, it's and not true. There's no review for me to read. Did you just want me to say read podcast review? Oh my goodness. Maybe you should have taken this one. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Take it away, Gabe. It's called a lead. Hey Gabe, guess what? Guess what, Gabe? What? We have a new podcast review. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We do. We do. You did read thanks, it. Thanks for telling me that. I, I didn't know. My goodness. Look at us being great hosts. So we have a brand new start written review. The title of this is Great Show Written by Disney Musician. Love, love a couple with kids exploring theme parks, themed entertainment, and some great content. Just love the energy and the info. Keeps smiling on my commute. Keeps me smiling on my commute. Always a must listen. So thank you very much, whoever Disney musician is. We greatly appreciate the five star review. It it greatly helps at the show and it supports us in a fantastic way. So if you guys want to make sure you support the show in a free way, you can always head on over to iTunes and leave us a five star review, and we'll give you a shout out here on the show. And I hope that our Fumble made you smile on whatever commute you're on. Yes, whatever commute you're on, <laughs> Nikki's ridiculousness and not knowing how to run do a podcast at all after so many episodes. 135 episodes to be specific. <laughs> Clearly, it's not enough for Nikki to understand the basics of <laughs> podcasting. So, I mean, I hope everyone's enjoying this nonsense, as it were. But, Nikki, did you know there's a really fun event going on to, at the end of this week? What? Yeah! That's news to me! And we're gonna be there! It's not like it's in bold italics and underlined on a screen. Not at all! No, it's not! (laughs) Uh, So we're gonna be at Midsummer Scream this weekend. So uh, this weekend, the dates would be July 29th through July 31st at the Long Beach Convention Center. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what Midsummer Scream is... It is the world's largest Halloween and horror convention, bringing all the chills and thrills of October to one summer weekend. Explore multiple haunted attractions in the Hall of Shadows. Shop more than 350 vendors, including horror-themed apparel, creepy home decor, special effects, makeup, masks, and costume. Enjoy panels and presentations from the leading names in horror entertainment and theme park attractions, live dark entertainment, and more. So uh, if you guys are interested in this, you can head on over to midsummerscream.org for updates, guests, vendors, and other special programming. Like I mentioned, it is running from Friday, July 29th, which it opens at 6 p.m. and runs to 10 p.m., which it's only the show floor. Then on Saturday, it's July 30th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then Sunday, July 31st, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. So on Saturday, at the end of the day, there is an actual big party that you could buy tickets to so uh we've been to those and they're an absolute blast oh they're super fun so uh doors open at 10 a.m on saturday and sunday for gold bat pass holders so now you're probably wondering what's a gold bat pass holder so these are the ticket options you have general admission weekends uh 62 dollars friday is 32 dollars saturday is 47 and sunday is 37 which gives you access to the show floor with the over 350 exhibitors. And it gives you admission to the mini haunts and attractions, as well as a whole bunch of the different panels, presentations, live performances, and more kids under 10 and under receive a free general admission only with paid adult admission, obviously. And then the one step up from that is the gold bat pass, which is $135. This is weekend admission to with one hour early entry every day of the actual uh, convention priority access to the panels and presentations front of line access to select attractions the hollow shadows collectible lanyard and credential limited edition gold bat enamel pin only available gold bat pass holders admission to midsummer scream after dark that's the saturday night party which runs from 8 p.m to 12 a.m and then a gold pat gold bat pass privileges are non-transferable blah 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 
uh, we will be there. We're gonna. That's actually gonna be our next episode. So we're gonna have uh, on location recording. We're gonna take our microphone, get some recording inside the panels. Obviously, Halloween Horror Nights is gonna be there, and a lot of other theme parks. Try to get some interviews, uh, just coverage in general, and our thoughts and and uh, everything about the news that's gonna be dropping at the actual convention. So it should be a ton of fun. If you guys see us there, make sure you come over and say hi. Uh, we're going to be all around the entire weekend, so make sure you come up, say hi. Uh, tell us you love the show if you listen. We love to hear people from people who listen to the show. It makes us ten times happier than if we were not hearing that you listen to the show, obviously. Seriously, it does. It, it makes us really happy when people come up to us and say we listen because... As, as far as we know, we're just doing this for our own fun. We don't know that there are people, except for a uh, theme park musician. Yeah, except for yeah. a Disney musician. Disney Dis- musician, Dis- Disney that's musician. what it was. Yes, ex- Shout out Disney musician. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you know, we wouldn't be sitting here messing up our processes <laughs> for anybody. So if you, if you tell us you like the show, it'd be like, oh, thank you. Someone's able to bear and grin through Nikki's ridiculousness. That makes it all worth it. Yes, it does. So yeah. if you see us, do say hi. So we will be at Midsummer Scream. Remember, Long Beach Convention Center, check it out. If you don't have tickets, buy tickets soon because that does sell out pretty quickly. Yes. So next up on the list, we were able to attend. And when I say we, Theme Park Duo was able to attend the grand opening and media day for Wonder Woman Flight of Courage at Six Flags Magic Mountain. We actually had our friends Nick and Ashley from The Mouse Vibes covering it for us so huge shout out to nick who really put on his big boy pants and was able to ride that roller coaster (laughs) his hands were shaking at the beginning of the video that we posted yeah so if you go over to youtube and type in theme park duo you'll find the ride pov that nick actually got to record while he was riding the coaster i actually didn't know this until like a day before he went but he was actually like crap in his pants scared about going but he was like he wanted to do good by us so he, he went anyway and did a fantastic job. Both of them did fantastic. Yeah, so they I, did. I couldn't be more thankful for them. But and the ride looks super fun. It absolutely looks fantastic. Now, there's a bit of information that we have here for you guys. If you don't know anything about Wonder Woman Flight of Courage here at Six Flags Magic Mountain. So we'll give you a little bit of this information. Yes. So Six Flags Magic Mountain, the undisputed thrill capital of the world, in partnership with Warner Brothers, Themed Entertainment, and DC, has opened yet another record-breaking coaster. Wonder Woman Flight of Courage to its unparalleled thrill ride lineup. Six Flags Magic Mountain's record 20th roller coaster, the most at any theme park in the world, is the tallest and longest single rail coaster on the planet, where riders will fly over 3,300 feet of track, towering 13 stories, boasts an 87 degree first drop, and soaring at speeds up to 58 miles per hour, the new coaster is located in the six-acre DC Universe area of the park, which will be expanded and entirely remodeled to include a new innovative restaurant and bar experiences, plus retail locations featuring exclusive DC branded merchandise. So it is a very impressive coaster, let alone the fact that there's 20 coasters at this park. Yeah, like that, that's, that's the most in like any theme park ever. You literally read you read that. I, I did. Oh. <laughs> Yes, okay. 20 is the most in the world. Yes. So that's absolutely, I mean, like this park is in our backyard and that's hard for me to even kind of grasp. Right? Still. It's just so normal for us. That park is yeah, so normal. Yeah, it is, it is very much normalized yeah. to us. But I mean, that that's absolutely, like comparing it to places like, you know, like any other Six Flags, like Six Flags Fiesta Texas uh-huh. or over Georgia or even to like European parks like an Alton Towers or a Tato Park for that matter. You know, like, that's absolutely insane to com- to compare it like that. Yeah. So, 20, 20 coasters. If you're a coaster nut, I mean, other than Cedar Point, this is the place to be. Uh-huh. So, uh, obviously, we didn't get to ride the coaster, but, you know, we saw Nick and got to talk about Nick's experiences and stuff. And to our knowledge, this ride is just buttery smooth. It looks so cool. Like, I can't wait. I want to go. It, it, feels, it feels like it's a living, breathing, well, not living, breathing, but like a living version of a Hot Wheels track. Yes. If that's and what just, it looks and like. And just the way you ride it, it's like you're not sitting next to anybody. It's literally like 
single file. You're sitting single file. Yeah, it, for int- all intents and purposes, you're like straddling the track. Almost. Yeah. So there's like nothing on either side of you, and it's it's bonkers looking. It, it so I'm excited. Bonkers. I'm wait. I can't wait to ride it. Yeah, I actually am very very excited to ride this attraction. And to my knowledge, you know, talking to everybody who's ridden it. Front, back, middle are all so drastically different uh-huh. uh, rides. You know, the front seat for a lot of people, it's like a medium intensity attraction, lots of airtime, that kind of stuff. Middle of the middle of the coaster is very much the same thing. Back row is insane. Huh. You're getting whipped around. You're getting thrown out of your seat ejector airtime. So much more intense than the front seat. So if you want something way intense, sit in the back row. If you want something a bit more on uh, the lighter side, I would definitely sit in the middle. If you want that airtime, sit in the front. Cool. So, very, very cool ride. Glad that Six Flags is keeping up with that, you know, biggest, fastest kind of line of coasters that they tend to do. That's what so, they do best. Yeah. So, another RMC coaster to their park, which is very nice. Next piece of news is that Walt Disney World is launching their Magic Band Plus. Walt Disney World has confirmed that their new Magic Band Plus wearable uh, wearable wristband will launch on July 27th. The updated Magic Band will still perform all the same features as the original, but will also offer a few new ways to interact with the resort in combination with mobile apps, such as the Disney Fab 50 character uh, collection game or a Batu Bounty Hunter mission in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. The light on the bands will also light up and flash in sync with the nighttime harmonious show at Epcot or Disney's Enchantment show at the Magic Kingdom. Unlike the previous system, however, these are not going to be given out to free for free to resort guests, so if you want one, it will cost you. Disney will be charging $34.99 for the new Magic Band Plus at select shops located throughout the four Walt Disney World theme parks at various Disney resorts and the Disney Pin Trader Shop at Disney Springs. Now, literally, as so, nobody knows, but we took a small break to do laundry. We did. <laughs> That's called editing. <laughs> um, nobody knows that, but as you were doing that, I was actually looking at Twitter, and somebody took a video of their Magic Man Plus. Oh, because it's out now, yeah. Yeah, with Harmonious, and it was the stupidest thing <laughs> in the world. It was so freaking dumb. It looked like the, like the cheapest little LED lights that were just kind of like, flickering and changing around the four corners of the stupid thing huh. like it, it was so dumb like to even and say it's, it's to, like, to, to even say like oh it's gonna time up and match the colors and that kind of stuff it makes it seem like it's gonna be this cool thing it's not you and why do you want to be staring anything. at your watch not even that i mean like it's think of it like the glow with the show stuff that we yeah have, yeah the, the glow with the, the show wand ears or wands stuff. or stuff that you're wearing so they're in everyone's line of sight or you can like hold up the wand but what are you going to do? Just hold up your arm? <laughs> I mean, it's stupid. All in solidarity. Or are you just going to like look like you're checking the time for the entire show? I mean, like, you might. What's the point? There is no point. No, no, there is there's absolutely no point. But I think my point is that it it that feature should have just been something that is just a part of it without having said anything. Because to me, it's nothing fantastic enough to warrant... Being in the press release of, oh my god, it's going to light up with everything else. Like, yeah. that's stupid. Yeah. But the other things, <clears throat> allowing you to interact with, like, statues and stuff and have audio cues turn on, that's pretty cool. That's cool. And I've seen some of the Galaxy's Edge bounty hunting stuff. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Like, all the interactive nature stuff that keeps you out of queues, out of shops. Like, I like that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's It's the ancillary content to the park, as it were, if you're not going to be going... On attractions. Yeah, like the wands that, you know, in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Exactly. Stuff like that. And even uh, at the Magic Kingdom where they had the um, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. Is that what it was called? Sorcerers? Something like that. Yeah, the the card game where you go up and battle and try to defeat villains and such. Um, It's stuff like that. But $34.99 just to kind of play those games is pretty steep. To me, I would just keep a regular Magic Band until they've started creating experiences for that Magic Band Plus that is worth the thirty four ninety nine. Like yeah. right now I don't think the the bounty hunter stuff or the Disney fiftieth character collection is worth it. Like you could easily go with somebody who has it already. Like to me, buying it on your own and doing it on your own is it's not there's no incentive yet. Yeah, not yet. I'm just sure, that, and that's yeah. just my opinion. Like I just don't think that the things that it does yet are warranting me to spend nearly forty dollars. Yeah. 
No, they'll, I'm sure they'll roll out with more things in the future. Yeah, so. But uh, that's just my two cents. <laughs> and then we're coming back here on the West Coast for this next piece of news. And it's Knott's Bay Farm added a chaperone policy. And this is because uh, not too long ago, I believe like a week or so ago, yeah. there was a pretty significant fight or fights that happened in the park. Enough to close it down. Yeah. And, um, you know, we love Knott's Berry Farm so much. Like, it's it's like our second home. We take Aaron there. We've had so many experiences there as a couple. Um, and even me being young, having gone there so many years, you know, I've, I've frequented that park so often. And to see it go through so much of this nonsense hurts a little bit. Yeah. You know, it, it really does stink. And, you know, if they have an issue, they have an issue and they're going to need to take care of it. And it seems like this new chaperone policy is something that's going to take to that next level to ensure the safety of their guests. And also just ensure, you know, that their guests have a pleasant experience. Yeah, because, you know, people talk about line jumpers. Just kids being kids, but also obnoxious. Big big groups that's kind of intimidating, you know? Yeah, so it's not like it's just like one or two kids. It's like groups of kids. Yeah. So, and when we say kids, we don't mean like eight-year-olds. We're talking about like 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah. Year-olds in the park causing nonsense. So. Up to to their own devices. Yeah, like they're just dropped off there by their parents. Yeah. And just, they do what they want. So, Knott's has enacted a chaperone policy. So we're going to read what the chaperone policy is, but to amend this a little bit, today, actually, they announced that they've actually expanded what we're about to read. Yes. So initially, the uh, chaperone policy was just for Saturdays and Sundays, but now it's, or sorry, Fridays Fridays and and Saturdays. Saturdays. Now it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the initial chaperone policy was three underage kids to an adult. Now it's four. So we can talk about the specifics of that once we go through the rest of this and how that actually is probably a good move. Yeah. So if you want to take that. Sure. Okay. So for decades, Knott's Berry Farm has been a place where families and friends come together to enjoy a -a one-of-a-kind park full of homegrown experiences and immersive entertainment. Millions of guests have counted on us for their daily dose of wholesome family fun, and we're committed to keeping that promise going forward. As a part of that commitment, the park will implement a chaperone policy beginning Friday, July 22nd, 2022, remaining in effect Fridays and Saturdays, and now Sundays, until further notice. Under the policy, all guests aged 17 years old or younger must be accompanied by a chaperone who is at least 21 years old to be admitted to the park. The chaperone must present valid photo ID with date of birth. One chaperone may accompany no more than four guests aged 17 or younger per day. Chaperones must accompany their party during the in- during entry, remain with the party at all times during the visit to the park, and be available fi- by phone throughout their stay. Guests aged 17 years old or younger who are found inside the park unaccompanied by a chaperone will be subject to ejection. This chaperone requirement applies to all Knott's Berry Farm and Knott's Soak City Water Park ticket and season pass holders. So I, I I absolutely applaud the park for, for going this distance to yeah. make this rule in order to ensure safety, just peace for guests who are going there to have fun. Um, you know, this has ena- been enacted for a week, <clears throat> and we've seen changes in the amount of people who are at the park uh-huh. on a Friday and Saturday. Like, it's been astounding. Like, instead of, you know, Ghost Rider having an over an hour wait, it's like 20 to 30 minutes now. Yeah. You know, on a Friday and Saturday, which is pretty bonkers. And I know that one of the things you brought up was the concern of like, well, now they're not getting enough business. Are they going to go back on this because they're not getting business? Yeah. Here are my, here's my two cents on this, just because I know that we've had this conversation before and I want to, and I think it's warranted to have on the podcast and I think it's interesting and, and uh, a good point. Um, I don't think they're going to go back on this, and that's because the the type of people that they're basically trying to keep out of the park alone are young kids who are probably not spending money. They're pass holders with they're no pass money. holders with no money, and they're yeah. like maybe buying one piece of food. It's not like they have a meal plan. They're or, not spending as much as a whole family who you who they want to keep there all day. Not at all, yeah. and I mean like maybe they'll see a small hit. 
but I don't think it's going to be significant enough for them to warrant removing the chaperone policy. Yeah. You know, additionally, I think that if they were, that would be a worse look to enact it than get rid of it because they're not making enough money. Yeah. I don't think that they would do that. But, you know, now now that they've added the amendment of four to a chaperone as opposed to three, I think that's smart because I, I when the first initial policy came out, I knew a few people who posted online like, well, we have four kids in our family and there's only one parent. How are we supposed to go together now? Yeah. You know, and I, in my th- mind, I was thinking, well, Knott's is going to have to make it, uh, adjustments to it. You know, obvious, you know, amendments and being okay with certain situations at the gate. Yeah. If it's clear this one person is with these four kids, it should be fine. Like, yeah. you know, these kids are not going to cause a problem yeah. They're with this one parent. Um, but I think by making it four to one, it kind of clears up that issue entirely. Because it's not like you're going to have five kids to one parent. Like, that's absurd. Yeah, I don't think that's happening too often. No, no, I don't, I don't think it is. So I think changing it to four from three is a good idea. So I think that's a good thing. Um, I'm actually curious whether or not this is going to get even expanded even more. To, well, to every Scary other, Farm? Every other day and Scary Farm. I really hope it gets it expanded to Scary Farm. I don't know if they will. But I really hope so because honestly, like for the past few years, we've we've said it, you know, I, I, I on the show and off, like like rowdy teenagers kind of ruin the experience a lot for guests and for the for the actors. And let's be clear, that is at every haunt. Yes. Literally every single haunt we go to, but it that seems is the case. Especially bad. It does not. Family. It does not seem especially bad. If okay, anywhere, to if, you. I'm if entitled anywhere, to my opinion, actually, dude. That's true. If no, you're not. <laughs> if, if anything, I actually feel like it's worse at Six Flags, personally. But eh, I never go to Six Flags. That's true. No, you do. You've gone with me. In the last five years. Oh, that's true. Maybe two out of those five years. <laughs> but um, I feel like every haunt has those issues. They do. I feel like that that's kind of a thing. I don't personally believe that within the last five six years. That rowdiness has affected my experience at Scary Farm simply based on the fact that I think the way that I approach Scary Farm and the way that I experience it probably just doesn't make me run into those crowds that often. Uh-huh. You know, ha- like I'd say outside of opening night, media night, outside of like our big trip and maybe one or two other trips, I'm kind of sitting down in the middle of scare zones just enjoying things. I'm not running through mazes with kids, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just kind of witnessing things happen. So I haven't really had any instances that have really dampered an experience at Scary Farm with kids of that age. Something that I experience only at Scary Farm and something that fills me with a a very deep anger is when throughout the night, and it happens multiple times a night, when some, like... 13 to 16 year old just goes boo and scares you. Oh, that's annoying like when they're crap. walking at you. I hate it. So I've, I've much. experienced it at every single haunt, but I definitely, because we go to scary farm together so often, I remember those moments more often. Yeah. It's really annoying. And it's not like you're going to stop and like get into a fight about it or like yell at them. You just move on with your night. Yeah. And because it won't, kids, it won't, kids are yeah. going to be kids. And it won't stop entirely if you enact a chaperone policy, but it might curb it a little bit. But it is literally the bane of my existence. I I, I'd rather deal with that than kids starting fights. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, like, I mean I'm yeah, totally so okay would I. with the kids being stupid. But if we could curb that a little bit from happening, oh, totally. that'd be great. I, I think that the, the inherent ridiculousness of teens being teens is never going to go away like that that stuff of kids going boo like in the middle of the dark walking down a scare zone or something i honestly don't think that'll ever go no it won't ever uh it'll always be a thing and the only reason why is because i did it as a kid (laughs) i did it at that age oh no i believe it's it is it is a thing that kids just do and yes it's annoying yes it sucks yes it happens at every single other theme park but I just don't see that ending. If anything, 
I think that that chaperone policy will end up keeping people out who are going to cause problems for monsters rather than other guests. That's what I care about at the end of the day, because more often than not, these monsters are putting their bodies on the line to entertain us, and they run into these jerks who want to punch them, start a fight with them because they're scaring them. And, and they're all, all amped up by their friends. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. they're all amped up by their friends, and then they cause a problem with the yeah. monsters. And like none of that should happen. These people are here putting their bodies on the line to have fun and scare us, and they don't need to have those nonsense people in their face telling them we're going to punch them or attempting to hurt them just because they're doing their job. Yeah. Which I think a lot of people tend to forget. Like, these people are human beings. Yes, they're dressed up, but they are humans. Like, they're other people who have feelings and emotions. And 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 I think that gets lost at these events, and that freaking sucks. Yeah. So, I think if the chaperone policy was enacted at Scary Farm, it would curb that. Don't think it's going to curb the, the nonsense, I'm going to scare you and act like a scare actor type person. Quite a little bit. It's, a, it's the same crap as them going up to, like, a scare actor and asking them a stupid question. You know what I mean? Like, hey, where's the bathroom? Hey, it's I'm... The same thing. I'm down for any amount of curbing jerky teenagers at yes. Scary Farm. Yes. And speaking of Knott's Berry Farm, staying on that track, last time I was there... Speaking of track, that's actually a much better uh, transition than I anticipated <laughs> there by accident. Uh, we saw all the massive construction that was happening in Fiesta Village. Oh, yeah. Uh, massive walls up. They've actually moved a lot of the food offerings from uh, Papa Loca to La Papa Loca or whatever it is to other locations because there's just construction walls up everywhere. And there's no announcement on what is being done, but a clear remodel. Or even maybe they might be getting rid of that entire area, maybe and adding a, like a flat ride or something. Maybe. So, I mean, who knows what's going to go on. We'll probably hear at some point what's happening in that area. But right now, there's no announcement and there's massive construction happening. On top of that, Montezuma's Revenge has been down for a very long time. It's going under a huge, massive refurb. And if you're at the park right now, you could probably see that there are a lot of pieces missing. Oh, yeah. You could the see whole loop, right? Uh, I'd say about like 90% of the yeah. loop is gone. The actual flywheel mechanical piece is taken out. Other pieces of track are taken out. They're actually sitting behind the flame broiler across the street behind Claim Jumper. <laughs> uh, across the street. So if you wanted to go sit on the track, you could if you wanted to and pay your specs. But um, we'll see what what's going to happen with it. There are a lot of rumors that are swirling around knots and how they're going to upgrade the attraction. What's going to happen? There was even this big rumor that came out about multiple profiles for the attraction, how it's going to launch, all these things, theming around it. You can find that a lot of that stuff online. I'm not going to entertain it here because it was leaked, and I, I don't necessarily think it's fair to quite talk about that all the time. But it's out there if you want to try to find that stuff. But, you know, the ride itself is a classic. I'm a little sad that they're getting rid of the flywheel. Yeah. It, it, that's a bit of a bummer because there is a inherent unique feeling just to getting launched on a flywheel like after you get released from that little cable uh you could feel it kind of like let go of the car and launch you out which is kind of fun um so i'm interested to see where it goes i know you and i really love that ride it was a little bit of a whiplash when you came back into the station so yeah. looking forward to that not happening yeah a little bit but um but you know. we do love it I love it a lot, actually. It was it was my first roller coaster ever. Aww. Ever, ever. So, uh, you know, seeing it change uh, the way that it is is a little sad. But, you know, time moves on. Time marches on. Things are going to change. You know, and that's fine. As, as long as I have those memories still. You know, and the ride isn't going away. It's just getting updated. So I'm very excited to see it change and get a little TLC that it really, truly deserves. I just wish that it was still flywheel yeah that, to me that 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 was the most important part but we'll see what happens we'll see what happens it's still staying at knott's berry farm they've opened a brand new restaurant called prop shop pizzeria and that is over near the uh walter knott theater right across the way from the bumper cars there was a pizza shop there before but now this is a much significantly nicer shop so much nicer huge massive improvement where you can get uh, cal like um, stromboli. I, to remember stromboli, I'm like, 
bad guy from Pinocchio. Stromboli. <laughs> uh, that's how I remember it. Stromboli, pizza, salad, pastas, plenty of desserts they had. Uh, tiramisu, they even had lemon drop cookies. Like, all these ridiculous things. And it's just really, really pretty. You got to see it recently when we went with, with Aaron. Yeah. And, like, so they expanded it. Um, I think I have this right. They took over the area where those bathrooms used to be also, and they moved the bathrooms. What bathrooms? The bathrooms. There what were bathrooms? bathrooms right there on the side of the old pizzeria. There were? Oh, yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so there were bathrooms They expanded right that. There. They made it bigger, and it looks so oh, nice. Those bathrooms are gone. That's kind of sad. They moved? You're sad over bathrooms? I'm just a little sad because... I, okay, side tangent. It's just memories of going to events... And, and that, being the, that being the only, like, bathroom that's available and, like, monsters being, like, right outside that bathroom and stuff, that that's just... So memories. That's all. It's just memories. Okay. Well, the bathrooms did not move far. Nothing happened in the bathroom that's worth remembering. They're, the Nothing bathrooms at all. are now just on right on the other side of the bumper cars. Yeah, so it's, like, down that little alley. There's even, like, a little spot for pets to use the bathroom, like a little patch of grass, uh-huh. so if you have, like, a service animal. And the bathrooms are actually gorgeous. Like, they are. really pretty. Really delving into that 1920s feel, uh-huh. you know, for uh, the Roaring Twenties, because that's, oh, for all intents and purposes, the Roaring Twenties area, but not named that yet. Uh, and they also added a few family bathrooms right there at that same location, which is super handy when you have a toddler. Which we use, you know, it was much easier for all of us to uh, use the restroom, still stay with the kid, make sure that she's fine instead of... You know, taking the turns going in and out of the bathroom. Or yeah. One of us taking our kid in with us. Yeah. So it's significantly easier. There's two of them on either side of the bathrooms. And the bathrooms this time are actually sharing a sink area. So once you go in, there's all the sinks. And then the men's is on the left and the woman's on the right. And you go into their own separate restroom. It's very clever. It is very clever. Yeah. And it's a good use of space. Um, but, you know, all these additions are just fantastic. And I, and I did try the food at the prop shop. I got the stromboli. And I got the tiramisu as well as the mozzarella moons. So the mozzarella moons are just mozzarella sticks, just in half circles. Oh. So I can't say a bad thing about anything that I ate. The mozzarella moons were really good, especially with like a side of marinara. They actually had really good flavor. Nice. The stromboli was bigger than my freaking hands. <laughs> like the thing was massive. And you have big hands. I do have big hands. And you could cut that thing in half and it could be a meal for two people nice i definitely think so and you can save a little money a little bit of money if you ended up doing that and then i left because i didn't want to get a dessert because i was like oh i don't, I don't want to spend money on dessert and then at the end of the day i was like oh, i kind of want a dessert <laughs> so then i went back and i got the tiramisu and that thing was big like a huge square and it was actually very very good i actually highly recommend the tiramisu if you like tiramisu um because it's it just in general the food there is good for for theme park food like it seems like a diss at a certain point, but it's not. It's just it's just a higher standard of food than you would come to expect yeah. from a theme park. And that's really just continu- continuing that trend of Knott's Berry Farm really having good food in general. So if, you, if you're at Knott's and you want to get some food at the park, make sure that you go to Prop Shop Pizzeria because it is a really fun, great addition. Okay, and next we are moving to a new... Knott's Berry Farm again! New theme park. We are moving to (laughs) Universal Studios Hollywood, where Jupiter's Claim has been added to Universal Studios' studio tour. So the original Jupiter's Claim set from Jordan Peele's expansive new horror epic, Nope, will be featured exclusively at Universal Studios Hollywood as a new attraction on the world-famous studio tour, beginning Friday, July 22nd, in tandem with the theatrical release of the new summer event film from Universal Studios Pictures and Peel's Monkey Paw Productions. I did Why not, are you so confused I didn't that? know that that was the name of his production Yeah, it's studio. Monkey Paw Productions. Haven't you seen like the detached monkey hand with the spoon in the teacup? Yes. Yeah, that's what that Okay, is. cool. The impressive and elaborate Jupiter's Claim set was created by production designer Ruth DeJong, then carefully disassembled post-production and transported to Universal Studios Hollywood, where it was meticulously reconstructed on site, complete with original props and details from the film. I think it's so cool that it's like the original. Yeah, the it's, it, it's, it's the not legit just a, sets. It's, yeah, it's not just like a remake. Yeah, recreation. Yeah. 
Jordan Peele, alongside producing partner Ian Cooper and Monkey Pop Productions, is thrilled to bring the film's fictional theme park to Universal Studios. Why did Hollywood. that, why did that I confuse don't you? don't know. You're having trouble. Wait, is, is there a theme park in the movie? I can't. Oh, wait, it says it right there. Yeah. Dude, spoilers. No, it's not a spoiler because it's in, it's in the trailer. It's a, okay. It's in the trailer. If it's in the trailer, well, it's not a spoiler. Anyway, that's There's no why, huge spoilers That's here. why I was hung up. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. There you go. Keep reading. Okay. <laughs> Keep reading. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Did you lose your spot? It's a very Do you want me to take paragraph. over? No. No. They're thrilled to bring the film's fictional theme Thank park God. to Universal Studios Hollywood <laughs> as a permanent studio tour attraction. Concepting the integration of the set to the studio tour began early in production in partnership with the filmmakers. Oh, so they had this planned all along. Yeah, they had a plan for a really oh. long time. Working collaboratively with Universal Creative at Universal Studios Hollywood to ensure the authenticity and accuracy. The Jupiter's Claim set, which can only be seen on the studio tour, marks the first time that a studio tour attraction has opened day and date with a movie release. It will be staged within Universal Studios' backlot alongside a host of other iconic movie sets that include Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds, the infamous Psycho House from Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, and Courthouse Square from Robert Zemeckis' Back to the Future. Jupiter's Claim set in Southern California, Santa Clarita Valley, is a family fun theme park that pre pre predicated wait, yeah, predicated. <laughs> predicated on the whitewashed history and aesthetics of the California Gold Rush, owned and operated with the evangelical pride by formal, former child star Ricky Jupe Park. Jupiter's claim becomes a pivotal location as the characters seek to investigate mysterious, unexplained phenomena leading them toward increasing danger and terrifying consequences. The studio tour is renowned for taking guests behind the scenes of an authentic movie and television production studio. With the exciting addition of the Jupiter's Claim set from Nope, coupled with the progressive rollout of electric studio tour trams, a summer of fun is just beginning at Universal Studios Hollywood. So we were really, really lucky because we were actually invited out for a unique experience, and that was to be able to experience the new segment of the studio tour from the electric tram, so like from the tram itself, so we know what everyday guests would be experiencing, but we also got to get off. How was the electric tram? They are so nice. nice. They are so quiet. Ooh. But there are times where you're going uphill, you're like, can I make it? I'm going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> but you, of, co of course you're going to make it. They're just a little bit slower. The quiet is good, though, because that first car on, like, the old tram. It is loud. So loud. Yeah. So, so yeah, so nice. they are they are deadly quiet. Like, it's actually really nice. Cool. It's perfect for all the productions, because now they don't have to worry about that anymore. You know, the trams are so quiet. Uh-huh. But um, we got to get off. We got to walk around the set. Cool. Touch it, take pictures, look at it. Everything. If you guys look at our social media, you're obviously going to see a lot of that stuff on TikTok. We posted a whole bunch of stuff on Twitter, on Instagram, everywhere. You'll see pictures of uh, me there at the Jupiter's Claim set. Now, at the time, the film hadn't come out, so I knew nothing about the film. Since then, I've seen it. Nikki has not. So I know for a fact that experiencing this is not going to spoil the movie for you at all. If anything, I actually think that it intrigued me more because I wasn't sure what was happening. Oh. So now that I have a better understanding of what the film is about and what happens and the events that take place, now I'm much more interested in what the experience is without going into further detail because I don't want to spill, uh, spoil anything for Nikki. But if you have seen the film, you know what I'm talking about because um, it definitely puts you on the edge of your seat. Now, we have a special interview that we were able to do, a very, very brief interview with John Corfino, who is the VP of Universal Creative at Universal Studios Hollywood. So we're going to send you over to that. Hello, everybody. Gabe here, and I am one of the fortunate people to be standing on the Universal backlot currently in the brand new section of Jupiter's Claim, which is from the movie Nope, Jordan Peele's Nope. And I am standing with Mr. John Corvino, who is the Vice President of Universal Creative. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? 
Doing very well. Very excited to actually be here standing on the real set from the film. I can't even imagine the undertaking it takes in order to transplant from the filming location to the Universal uh, Studio Tour. Correct. I mean, it was uh, it was a real, truly a labor of love. A lot of magical things came together. It's very exciting for us. Um, this really started about eight months ago or so, meeting Jordan and the the opportunity just presented itself and and we grabbed it with both hands. I mean, with with um, with Jordan Peele's, you know, film history and filmography, you know, it's very exciting to have this film come out. And there's no wonder you guys would jump at the opportunity to get something like this for the studio tour, which is very exciting. And then when it comes to the experience, you know, this is the first time that we're going to have a film open up with the actual studio tour experience at the same time. Now, because a lot of people nowadays are very, very cautious about spoilers and not wanting to ruin movies and things like that. How did you approach the experience on the studio tour of creating? to make sure that you're not only you know setting people up for an experience for the film but not overstepping the bounds and maybe potentially spoiling something for them well <clears throat> we were very fortunate because we were working with jordan peele and his entire team and after seeing the sets he had out there this was again just the right thing so it was really incredibly um just fantastic timing and and good good fortune for us because so many interesting things happen in this particular set in the film, it really opens up on it and it finishes on it. Um, and so, you know, the chance to bring, again, what we do at Universal, bring at this level of authenticity, the actual sets, just like other filmmakers here at the back lot, Robert, you know, Robert Zemeckis, Back to the Future, Steven Spielberg, War of the Worlds, and now Jordan Peele takes his place amongst those great filmmakers. Yeah, and, and, and like you were saying, like the details, the real sets and everything, walking around this area, there are so many fine details that, that you could come up to, coming up to the windows and seeing the candy or the ice cream, the ice cream shop, the, the well, and things like that. For you, and being a fan of movies, I'm sure you are, mm -hmm. what is your favorite part of this set, and, and what are you excited for guests to experience? You know, I, I, being totally candid about it, I just remember when I first walked up to the actual set out in Agua Dulce, it was... It just seemed like it was the perfect thing. And seeing this, it just looks exactly like that. And so it how, that's how it really all came together. And again, bringing that level of authenticity to it. So again, whether it's the paddle wheel over there or the inflatable and all, how all those things play into the film, it's just being able to see it. And like I said, the great part is guests will be able to drive through here on July 22nd on the Universal Studios uh, tram and drive through it. And our VAP guests will be actually able to get off the tram and walk around a little bit and explore so it's it's been a lot of fun it's a big incentive to get that vip tour then yes, so, it is. so that you can get here and see all the fine details because trust me there are, there may be even some qr codes in the round that people might want to scan too if you're on the vip tour just saying so but anyway thank you so much for spending time with us and really appreciate it. looking forward to experiencing the uh, jupiter's claim set here at the universal studios uh, studio tour Great. thank you so much for being here so like right before i actually got to do this interview the the sound for the experience started going off <laughs> as people were interviewing, which I found very funny. And it also gave me another opportunity to hear everything. But something that you know, obviously John was very excited about was the details. You know, the details and, uh, and accuracy of the experience. And he's 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 100% correct. You know, there are so many fine details in this set that when you go buy it on the tram, you're, you're probably going to miss a few things. Uh -huh. So if you go on the VIP tour, you're going to be able to get off and experience it like we did and really see those fine details that are really going to uh, allow you to get up close and feel how realistic everything is. Because there's like candy in, in barrels and T-shirts hanging up and plates and cups and everything else in the windows like you could buy them. Oh, cool. So it's it's very it's very very cool. So hopefully everybody is going to be able to experience the the Nope set at Universal Studios Hollywood. We highly suggest checking it out. It was very very fun. Uh, and Nikki, we could have another conversation about it once you've seen the film because uh, I need to unpack a lot of things with you about that okay. movie. Okay, I'll see you in the movie. next few days. Yes, please. So moving on from the theme park news. We have a little bit of Halloween news that we need to jump into with Haunting, Haunting Headlines. Headlines. So first up on Haunting Headlines, we have 
huge announcement coming out of Halloween Horror Nights on both coasts, and that is The weekend is collaborating with Halloween Horror Nights Orlando and Hollywood to create an all-new haunted house. So for the first time ever, multi-award winning artist The weekend joins forces with Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights to inspire all new terrifying haunted houses based on his record-breaking After Hours album. Beginning September 2nd at Universal Orlando Resort and September 8th at Universal Studios Hollywood, guests will spiral into the twisted mind of his mysterious artist to experience the weekend after hours nightmare. Global phenomenon, The Weeknd is re renowned for his groundbreaking music that blends daring, provocative lyrics with the innovative sound and ominous undertones. After Hours is The Weeknd's fourth consecutive number one album and has spawned multiple chart-topping hits including Too Late, Heartless, In Your Eyes, and the widely popular single Blinding Lights, which is ranked as the number one greatest Hot 100 hit of all time by Billboard. I guess I should start listening to The Weeknd. Yeah, you probably should. Literally in the car, he's like, I don't know any of The Weeknd songs. And I play Blinding Lights. She goes, oh, I know this song. I've heard the song, yeah. But have I actively sought out and listened to no, this haven't. album? No, but you knew no. it, though. You knew it. I did you know the song. It. Yeah, yeah. anyone with ears has heard this song. True, but you were like, I don't know any of this song. Because I didn't know enough I to know that know. it was his song. I don't know this song. Which is The Weeknd. I want to listen to weekdays. That's exactly what I sound like. I don't know what. <laughs> I mixed you and Bill Cosby a little bit. For for um, in my defense though, when you asked me if I had heard that song, you didn't say, "Have you heard Blinding Lights?" You said, "Have I, you?" No, heard I said, D "I know where you're going with this. I know you're going with this, and I have a defense already." But you can finish. I'll let you finish. He asked me. Have you heard Blinded by the Light? Because he says those lyrics in the song. And so I start singing the very old song, Blinded by the Light. You know, that one. Yes. And so in my defense, when he, when he, you asked me, have you heard Blinded by the Light? I was like, yeah. In the context of The weekend, though. The weekend doesn't have a song called Blinded by the Light, so no. Yeah, I, I know, but it. still, it's called Blinding Lights, and he <laughs> says Blinded by the Light in the song. <laughs> anyway, this fall, select tracks from the riveting album are being reimagined as a horror movie soundtrack for the outrageously haunting experience at Halloween Horror Nights. The dark undercurrent behind the weekend's enigmatic persona will permeate the all new Halloween Horror Nights haunted houses on both coasts. With the eerie sounds of after hours reverberating throughout the experience, guests will step into a surreal living nightmare filled with grotesque characters and themes inspired by the weekend's music and short films. As they're stalked by slashers, bandaged maniacs, gruesome toad like creatures, guests will be challenged to survive the night while trapped within the terrifying, unexpected world of the weekend after hours nightmare, a place that only exists in the weekend's vivid imagination and from which one may never escape. So this is actually pretty exciting. I mean, like, I, I think a lot of people had had this kind of on their list of things they expected this year. Yeah. You know, rumors of what houses were coming from where, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, I, I think certain people feel a very particular way about including The weekend in Halloween Horror Nights. And for one, I'm not really into that gatekeeping shit. Like, that's stupid. Yeah. Like... Yes, horror can come from anywhere. Horror is is a multifaceted genre that isn't just slashers, ghosts, ghouls, zombies, and things like that. There are things that are considered horror that you may not consider horror. And I think some people kind of need to widen their view of what is considered horror. Exactly. Like, if you look at some images from The weekend's work... It's terrifying. Yeah. It's terrifying. And and I'm not just talking about like him and the bandages or bandages or anything, but like there's a whole bunch of other stuff that is absolutely terrifying uh, in some of his short films and music videos. And uh, I, I, I don't know. It's just like those people who are uh, crying and moaning about the weekend and then being at Halloween Horror Nights are the same people who are probably going to buy tickets for opening night. So it's just very annoying to me that, you know, people are, quote, up in arms about The weekend being at Halloween Horror Nights yet are still going to go. Yeah. You know, I think it's stupid. It's super um, stupid. 
Yeah, I, I think horror comes in every shape and form, and we have to allow Halloween Horror Nights to expand past your Freddies and your Jasons and your aliens and predators and Ash versus Evil Dead and crap like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, we love them. That's awesome. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Thumbs up. But we need something new. We let's, need something different. Yeah, we need some expansion new. upon stuff. You know, just like we have had Alice Cooper at Halloween Horror Nights or Black Sabbath at Halloween Horror Nights, even Rob Zombie at Halloween Horror Nights. Now we have the weekend. And if anything, I think that he's a pretty good fit for the event. So I, for one, am excited to not only see the visuals of the music video, but also hear the music. Yeah. Like, it's exciting music. I, I like a lot of his songs. So I'm pretty pumped about it. I don't know how you feel in particular about it. Um, I mean, I'm not opposed to it. You know, we'll we'll see. As long as it's a fun house with some creepy, you know, imagery, I'm sure I'll enjoy it. And I love good music, so I guess I just start listening to his music. But if his uh, if his Super Bowl halftime show is any indication, it'll be it'll be pretty good. Half his house is just gonna be us running through the lights in that hallway <laughs> like he did at the Super Bowl halftime show. So, uh, and the other half is just um. Big football players throwing footballs at me and me trying to catch So them. it's a Super Bowl halftime show themed maze yes. at Halloween Horror Nights. Yes. Makes sense. But the fear is of you constantly being in fear of getting hit by footballs. Like Hans Molman getting hit in the groin, groin with a football. Yeah. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Nope, just agreeing with you. <laughs> Still on the Halloween Horror Nights train, but not at our park. It is at Universal Studios Japan which they released their full entire lineup for 2022. And uh, I want to preface this news with the fact that everything that's on their site is in Japanese. Oh, and I had no. to directly translate everything that was on their site to get this information. And it doesn't translate super well all the time. Are you going to make me read it? Yeah, of course. Oh, it's going to okay. be great. <laughs> um, so we're going to go through their full entire lineup of stuff. And... Don't be mad at us because it's not fully translated fantastically because it was Google Translate. Thumbs up. Okay, so brought to you by Google Translate. <laughs> so Nikki, we'll we'll trade off on this, okay, this yeah. stuff. So the first Universal Studios Japan. Um, it, I think this is a scare zone. Scare zone. I think this is a scare zone. Yeah, especially because it's called Street Zombies. Yes, is Street Zombies. Escalate scale and fear in all directions. <laughs> Zombie nest eating Hell Street. This year, the scale and impact will escalate to infinity. In addition to the most types of zombies in the history of the park, led by the eerie icon Hamikuma on the street, a new projection mapping that allows you to immerse yourself in a more crazy world is now available. No more escape in the park due to the greatest horror in history. Why did you have to read it that way? Because you it makes it, but... it better. Does it not? Yeah, it does. Thank you. <laughs> Next up is Biohazard The Extreme. Confront the creatures with your friends and fully open your adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> Survive from the tense tragedy. Survival Horror Maze has evolved to experience the extreme horror of Biohazard. So this is a Resident Evil theme. Yes, it is. Uh, at the Raccoon City Police Station, where you've escaped, confront the attacking attacking zombies and creatures, and survive the two routes awaiting different threats. And excited about the world of Biohazard, which allows you to enter the whole body, soul body such as the development that changes according to your actions, and the display of the clear rank. Experience the horror of confronting Tyrant and Ricker that appear in front of you, and experience the ultimate sense of urgency and exhilaration by confronting creatures with your friends. So this sounds sort of like you have a gun. Because uh... it's talking about it's talking about a leaderboard. And changes according to your actions and displays of the clear rank oh yeah i guess it does yeah. unless unless it's like bad translation but that sounds like you, you might have guns like it's a like it's a zombie laser tag kind of like infected here at not yeah 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 so that'd be cool if it's like a a interactive, uh, interactive resident evil zombie maze that's that'd pretty dope cool. um and well, it sounds like there's started, two different routes you started the police station so it would make sense that you grab a gun <laughs> yeah and there's two different routes to it sounds uh -huh. like okay next up is universal monsters legends of fear 
heart rate max to the legendary <laughs> monster that appeared in front of you. America's Halloween <laughs> Horror <laughs> Night <laughs> Satisfaction <laughs> number one maze, the legendary maze who recorded the number one satisfaction level <laughs> at Universal Orlando Resort's Halloween Horror Night oh, has so, arrived. So this is a It's transplant. rated number one. Is it, is, it's the same maze? Is that what it's saying? I think that's what it's saying. It's like a transplant maze from, oh, yeah, yeah, from yeah, yeah, Halloween yeah. Horror Nights in so Orlando. So it's like a favorite at yeah. Orlando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the graveyard that sinks in the dark, you will escape from the invading monsters, relying only on your friends. Werewolves, Frankenstein, Dracula... Can you survive from this hell while entering the gorgeous world of masterpieces and being exposed to a sense of urgency beyond the limits and unexpected and fierce attacks? It sounds like there should be one thing after that, but everything else is just like, it's only running from this time to this time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next one is Cult of Chucky, Chucky's Hospital Ward of Madness. That cruel murderer revives on the stage of the hospital. <laughs> that horrifying murderous drama begins again. A cruel and ferocious guy attacks, chops, and dis dismantles patients. Get involved in a real and unpleasant world with a sense of urgency that is chased forever. So I'm assuming that guy that they're talking about is Chucky. Yes. Okay, the next one is Zombie De Dance. The super popular Ratata Dance is the, is the last... This year. I don't know. <laughs> I don't <laughs> An know. enthusiastic party dancing in the scariest zombie hell. The Ratata dance in which everyone dances together with their whole body. It's their also, whole body, Nikki. It's also the last of this year. From the eerie circus juggling show led by Hami Kuma to the unprecedented bizarre soft dance by decaying zombies and the stage by gothic vampires. A wide variety of power-ups. Dominate the park with all six stage shows and new horrors. Don't miss the enthusiastic dance and ratata dance finale. Dancing with zombies. Next up is Sherlock Holmes, The Curse of the Rose Sword. This is the one that I actually found the most interesting. Ooh. The next victim may be you! A full-scale horror theater involved in a horrific incident. Invited to a movie premiere, you encounter a cursed incident about the sword that was the motif of the film, the next victim of the horrific murder scene. Maybe you? <laughs> <laughs> Engage in an amazing mystery experience that gets caught up as part of the story of the detective Sherlock Holmes. The next one, I've, I I'm, I don't know what kind of ride it is. Okay, let's honest. see. The next one is rat -a tat plus Hollywood Dream. The ride. rat -a tat from, I believe, the creators J. Soul Brothers from Exile Tribe will be installed for a limited time this year as a thrilling ride attraction. Excited about the experience of running through the sky at an exhilarating speed to the up-tempo rhythm of rat -a tat So I'm assuming that's like a band or a song or, uh, or something? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. That is the full lineup for Halloween Horror Nights in Japan at Universal Studios. Via Google Translate. Via Google Translate, which clearly... Uh, Gave us some funny things, but uh, definitely not laughing at anything in particular, just the translation uh, errors yes. from Google. So thank you, Google, for I will for forever the dance with my whole body. Your whole body dance. <laughs> dance the no, whole body. let's not be kidding. I, I only dance with my arms. That is truth. Yes. Not even your head. Nope. Just your arms. Just my arms. Lots of flailing. And my heart. Yes. There's lots of heart in your dance. There is. I give you that. Yes. So next up on the list, and the last thing on our list to talk about on today's episode, is Not Scary Farm released a video listing all of the returning mazes. Now, a lot of this isn't surprising just because, you know, they, they talk about what mazes are leaving the year prior. Yeah, so we know it's coming back already. So we know it's coming back. But if you don't know what Not Scary Farm is, or if you've been but you're not familiar and you didn't pay attention last year or something... We gotcha. Yes. Here's the information. So here are the returning mazes for 2022. First, we have Mesmer, Sideshow of the Mind. Within the con canvas tent lies the secret of the most potent force in the universe, the human mind. Give in and succumb to the hypnotist Mesmer and his sinister sideshow as it preys on your hidden fears. Release your inner thoughts and descend into a world of madness, torture, and eerie enlightenment. There you will uncover the grotesque secrets hidden as you brave through the most terrifying show ever created. The next is The Depths, 
A heavy fog drapes over an abandoned port village where ancient creatures lurk inside the pitch-black underground caves hidden below the seaside shores. The Nightwatch mining crew has mysteriously disappeared, and village rumors point to the eerie tunnels the town sits upon. But be warned, all who have entered have never resurfaced. Myths of the terrifying horrors that lurk in the cave have often been whispered, but never confirmed. Did the crew meet their demise at the hand of vicious creatures that live within the cave? Journey into the ominous caverns to discover if the superstitions revolving around the cave are true or not. Then we have Waxworks. Mysterious lights and strange noises have begun to emanate from the eerie abandoned wax museum. It's rumored that blood-curdling screams can be heard echoing through the walls of the Waxworks as victims are, are horrifyingly submerged into a scorching hot cauldron of bubbling wax. The once prominent plastic surgeon, Dr. Augustus Scratch, has been seen tinkering at night and is now ready to show off his beautiful yet terrifying lifelike masterpiece of hot molten wax and bloody flesh. Take a closer look at his gruesome works of art and try to escape his deadly grip or become the newest masterpiece to add to his collection! Next is Dark Entities. Or Dark and Titties. Dark and Titties. <laughs> Teleport beyond Earth into a realm. Why did I say the word realm? realm. Like that? <laughs> Teleport. I, I actually, I have this like anxiety thinking that it's still Google Translate and it's going to be all weird. <laughs> it's gonna, it's so, gonna be wrong. Yeah, so I just keep expecting it to go off the rails. Okay. Teleport beyond Earth into a realm where darkness is absolute. In the depths of space, a lone station faces, faces terror beyond all imagination. An extraterrestrial mutation has invaded the station, and it's on the prowl for new hosts. The unearthly inhabitant's force increases as it feeds on its unwilling victims. Escape the dark entities before their deadly force eliminates all living forms aboard the station. There's nowhere to escape when time is running out. Next up is Pumpkin Eater. Survive the wrath of the murderous seven-foot-tall creature that haunts the old woods surrounding the hollow in the Pumpkin Eater maze. The notorious creature is on the prowl, hidden within the dark confines of the haunted town he once terrorized. To escape the sinister pumpkin eater's wrath, all who enter must go on a quest through the silent town of victims, face a cave of crawling insects, and solve the labyrinth of thorns that blocks the way out. And next is Dark Ride. Journey through an abandoned carnival ride where cruel carny folks still linger in the shadows of in this dark ride, Castle of Chaos. The carnival has become a refuge for freaks and carnies. Now those shunned performers have created a dark world of terror in which they plan to unleash on those who enter. Dark Ride will lead brave visitors through a treacherous path and into the bowels of a long-neglected attraction. As sinister shadows and horrifying scenes cast the gloom over the once pleasant ride, it's everyone's worst nightmare, being helplessly trapped inside an abandoned carnival ride without a way out now on to the last one and quite honestly probably my favorite maze in scary farm history nice this is origins the curse of calico pierce the veil of time and discover the secret of the evil fog that hangs over not scary farm in origins the curse of calico Unearth the sinister paranormal activity that plagues the town as sarah marshall is put on trial for her suspected crimes of witchcraft all will be unveiled when the witch, Green Witch rises and curses the town folk, transforming them all who have accused her into a wicked horde of malicious creatures with an eternal quench for the, quench for the living. Now, I love this because it is a m event with a maze about the event. <laughs> <laughs> it is an event that has a maze that tells why the event is the event. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whoa. Like, it is super meta, and I love it, and I don't know why they didn't save it for the 50th, but I, I, like, I'm fine. I'm happy that we have it. Yeah. But it's honestly my favorite maze of all time, and I, d I never wanted to leave. Ever, 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 <laughs> ever, ever, ever. Well, if Dark um, Raid is any, is any indication, it'll be around for a long time. That's actually a very good point. <laughs> uh, very, very good point. But also, just like, how could how can how can we get rid of a catawampus monster? Right. Like I never want to get rid of the catawampus monster. Maybe if maybe anything, even after the maze goes, he'll stay and he'll just roam. I need a catawampus plush, especially uh, a catawampus yeah. monster plush. I want With that. The That's baby. my hug. Can you hear me? Hear me now. I'm sending you vibes. I'm sending the info from my brain, from my thinking brain. Catawampus monster. 
Just the thank you brain. Catamomp is monster plush. As opposed to the at rest brain. They're two separate things, Nikki. Catawapus plush. Catawapus monster plush. I want it. I'm making it happen. Making it reality. Okay. Making my dreams become a reality. You Nikki. do that. Yes, I'm trying very hard. Uh, that's the list of returning mazes. We're probably going to get returning scare zones relatively soon. Yeah. Which, to my knowledge, and probably going to be no new scare zones. They're probably going to be the same. Uh, if anything, maybe we're going to get something different for Fiesta since... The dance floor is closed. Or nothing. Or nothing. Yeah. So we're probably going to get the hollows. Ghost Town Streets, of course. Uh, we're going to have the Roaring Twenties area, which was called... What was the... The Goring Twenties. The Goring Twenties, yes. How did I forget that? I don't know. Uh, we're going to have the Clown Scare Zone. And then we're also going to have uh, Forsaken ghost. Lake. So did you say the... Ghost Towns? Yeah. Okay. So I'll do it again. Uh, Goring Twenties, Clowns, Ghost Town... Uh, Hollows and Forsaken Lake. So yeah. th those are the five. So I, I don't anticipate a new scare zone. I, I'm assuming that everything's going to go into the mazes this year. So uh, we'll see. And I know that we're getting two new mazes. I've seen some construction picks. The construction that's happening uh, where Paranormal was is pretty significant because it's coming out really far. Cool. Uh, like really far. Like if, you, if you're familiar with Not Scary Farming, you remember where all the switchbacks were for Paranormal. That is the front of the maze now. It's what? gone all the way out there. So Where are they going to put the line? In front of that? Or on the side? Well, it's always, gone, side? it's always gone down the side. More? Maybe. Maybe they'll move those porta potties Maybe. Who knows? But um, that one, and then I've seen pictures of the one that's over at Mystery Lodge. So there will be a maze back there this year. I just don't know anything about them. So I'm curious to see what they are. Cool. And they're not, so Scary Farm's not going to be at Midsummer Scream this year, so they're not going to have an announcement this oh, weekend. Oh, no. So we know that they're going to probably just focus on the, the online presence. Do you think they'll have their own announcement that. event? I don't think so either. No? I think they're focusing on the online releasing of oh, everything like they did last year. Okay. So um, that's what they're going to be doing. Okay. So uh, that's the information we have on Scary Farm right now. Very exciting because obviously I'm a huge Scary Farm fan. We're huge Scary Farm fans. So anytime that we have any new info regarding Scary Farm, you're going to hear it from us, and we'll talk about it. So, uh, Nikki, what mazes do you think are going to leave this year for Scary Farm of the returning mazes? Um, I think Pumpkin Eater will leave. So, in and just to give context, next year, not 2022, but 2023 is the 50th anniversary of Not Scary Farm. Yeah, I think Pumpkin Eater and Dark Ride will leave. I think that Pumpkin Eater for sure is going to leave. Uh -huh. Which then begs to uh, begs the question: Will the hollows leave? It might, also. or will they create a new maze that's within the confines of the hollow? I would hope that they'd get rid of both. I would agree. Um, I would say that dark entities in Pumpkin Eater are probably going to leave. Uh, I wouldn't. I would. I would not think that they would get rid of Dark Red just because of how popular it is. It's so popular, but it's like a full two or three years older than Dark Entities. That's true, but also Dark Entities has never gotten a line. Yeah. Like it never like do you remember the last time we went in that maze that had a line? No. Yeah. Like I, I just don't see Maybe it lasting we'll that much lose longer. Three. We honestly might lose three. Yeah. We could lose three, because we could potentially lose Dark Ride, Pumpkin Eater, and uh Dark Entities, because I don't think Waxworks is going anywhere because this is its third year. Yeah. It's too new. The depths is actually getting kinda old. So maybe the depths is one of them. And then Mesmer's brand new from last year. Weren't so the I, depths that's not and going dark anywhere. entities the same year? No, I actually think that. Uh, I, I think they were. I think you're right, actually. Yeah. I actually, I honestly, I don't remember. I don't remember. Everything, either. everything blends together. I don't remember, but I think 15, I'm right. 16, 17, 18 years ago at a scary farm, yeah. everything kind of blends together to a certain extent. So, but um, maybe we'll lose three. Who knows? I mean, that might be a curveball that comes this year that we don't know about. Maybe, especially with the fiftieth. For a out. year to do it, it would be the fiftieth, so they could have a whole yeah. bunch of new stuff. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, and I wouldn't be shocked if they bring back the hanging for the 50th anniversary as well. I hope. Maybe do like a, a wrap out of the story. Because leaving us on the cliffhanger of they, they hang the it. lawman and that's yeah. just the end of the story is a little bit too much of a cliffhanger for me. Yeah. I want I want an ending. I want an ending and I want the lawman to win. Yeah. I want the lawman to win. Yeah. So... Uh, but that leads us to the end of this week's episode. We appreciate you guys being a little bit patient with us. 
uh, in dropping the episode of One Day Later. The life of a parent takes precedence over anything else. So we had to take care of some duties as parents, and that kind of pushed this to the wayside. So we appreciate everybody's patience and waiting for the episode to come out. Hopefully it was worth the wait, especially with Nikki's ridiculous flubs at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> uh, you know, it's what I'm here for. Yes, to do. Yes, hundred thousand percent. Yes, you had a few flubs too, but nothing like mine. No, yeah, you did. Never, (laughs) never. Anyway, thank you again for listening to this week's episode, everybody. If you guys enjoy the nonsense that you hear on these shows, make sure you head on over to iTunes, leave us a five star written review. It's a free way to support the show, and it helps us out greatly. Like I said earlier. It raises us up higher in the standings, and it makes it easier for everyone to, fi- everyone to find us and enjoy us like you guys are right now. If you want to, guys, support the show in another way, you can always head over to a T Public store where you can find some of our merch. And that is the theme park dual masks, shirts, and other fun things. We have a Halloween version with the skulls and a lot of other really fun stuff. So definitely go check that out. Also, don't forget to check out the show sponsor, Drinksmith. If you like freshly made cocktails, delivered directly to your door. Check out Drinksmith. In every show notes, you'll find Buy Drinks. That is the link to go check out Drinksmith. If you love those drinks like we do, you'll be very thankful. So uh, definitely check us out on social media. You can find us at Theme Park Duo on almost every single platform. So when that comes to YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, TikTok is the Theme Park Duo. But if you typed in Theme Park Duo, you'll find us as well. And uh, we would love if you follow us on all of our social media where we post everything, our thoughts or opinions and news and everything in between. And of course, when it comes to Halloween season, we're going to be very busy. So So we're going to be be posting everything there. All of our experiences, all the media nights, everything that we experience is all going to be there on those social media platforms. So stay tuned for lots of fun stuff. If anything, follow us for the Midsummer Scream stuff because we're going to be posting all the news and announcements that we're going to be having at Midsummer Scream on our social media platforms. If you want to reach out to the show, questions, comments, concerns, things you want to hear, things you don't want to hear, want to tell Nikki how ridiculous she is for messing very simple structural things up on the podcast, you can always reach out to... I don't want to tell it this time. <laughs> Thebardu at gmail.com. Yep. You don't want to get those emails? No. Send your hate mail of Gabe for making fun of no his hate mail. What I love, over I to love you. Theme Park Duo at Gmail I love you. I make fun of you because I love you. I know. If I didn't make fun of you, it means I would love you. You'd love me anyway. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, thank you again for listening to this week's episode, everybody. And always remember, there's, there's always, always a, a great, great big, big beautiful, beautiful tomorrow. tomorrow. See, See ya. ya. Thanks for riding with the Theme Park Duo. Make sure to gather all your belongings before the end of the podcast. Bye-bye.